This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. With week number nine in the books, it is now time to take a look at the futures market and dig into week number 10. Some buzzy teams across the board for this week, talking some Ravens and their upside, talking Texans, if they can make a surprise run towards the playoffs. Here to break down that with me today is Ryan Williams. He'll break down his thoughts on those Ravens, the Texans, the futures market in general. Then I'll talk about week number 10 and where my models show value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Tuesday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. And Ryan, we said last night that, hey, you know, it's kind of a interesting game for up of the week, and it was anything but. Uh, so hopefully week number 10 can bounce back. How are you doing today? Yeah, well, nice little uh, into the week nine capper for you, Jim, having that three and a half there model telling you that uh, six was a, a favorable number and uh, we needed to go even higher than that. Uh, yeah, fool, fool's gold, right, to think of the Jets being uh, being able to to cover the spread at home, uh, public money coming in on them, not able to get Brees Hall going. Uh, but, you know, shout out to the Chargers defense. That was the one kind of thing that we uh, that I talked about mostly, yeah. um, especially with just being able to kind of keep the game close with uh, Wilson on the other side there. Uh, but the defense showed out. They were absolutely, you know, playing in- incredibly, especially on the road there in a hostile environment. Like you got to give them credit where credit's due. So uh, we put that in the books, cl- close it, and uh, we move on to uh, week 10 here. Well, you did get your under. Um, and right. you said the word fool's gold and like how many times Ryan have we said that about the chargers? So like if, you, if we were going to have, like it was a fool's gold matchup last night. So times, I think no times. matter what happened last night, it was going to be that way. It just happened to be the jets were the team that were that for the one night, like the chargers will be it again in the very near future. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And a favorable matchup as well. Oh, yeah, we know that. We know this. This is just how the world works. I accept that, and it's okay. I feel lucky to have gotten away with being behind that that wretched, wretched team for once in my life. We're going to break down the futures market here in just one second. I want to see if we can get some value in the Ravens to win the Super Bowl, potentially. Plus 850 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll talk about whether that's a value. We'll talk about the Texans, uh, plus 250 now to make the playoffs. And then other futures Ryan likes entering week number 10. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or over on Spotify as well. You can also find this show on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch it. Log in with your FanDuel account or go to the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, a Roku device. You can watch us. Uh, you can watch Covering the Spread, the Heat Check NFL shows. You can watch the Daily ISO with Tom Vecchio. You can watch Run It Back. You can watch Up and Adams, all in the same place on FanDuel TV Plus, a fantastic place to get all of your FanDuel needs covered. Now, Ryan, let's start things off here by talking about those Baltimore Ravens, who are currently plus 850 to win the Super Bowl this year. And they had another huge win over a quality team in week number nine. So is plus 850 appropriate or does that sell the Ravens short right now? It, it It's appropriate. I mean, you're talking about arguably team every week. Like the Chiefs are going to be... Chiefs are going to be up there, um, regardless of how how they're playing games or what what's happening with Kelsey or anything like that. Uh, just you know the way the public perception is and the way that the books align this. Like we're always going to see the Chiefs up there. Philly absolutely rolling. You know, I even think San Fran. You know, six to one there. It, that it seems seems to be a little light. Like I don't I don't know that they are you know a, a tenth behind the eagles there um just yet with the way the eagles competition we're gonna see um with the eagles uh coming out of their bye um if they're for real but yeah 850 it's going to feel like a, a wrong number i feel like to the public um because it's just baltimore like they've kind of t- disappointed over the past couple seasons we talked about the injury history here but i mean the way the defense is playing it's it's 
it's nice. And if you had them, you know, at 12, at 12 to one or, or higher as we had kind of been talking about the AFC North in the summer and leading into the year, like this was one of my favorite divisions just because of the Bengals and the, and the Ravens, and then potentially what was going to happen with the Browns and even the Steelers, like having a winning record under Tomlin, like this has been a division that has really outside of the Steelers, I should, I, maybe the Browns, but the Browns defense, I feel like has kept them in the right. competition. This has been a division that's been fun to watch. And it, it it seems right. I will say I have seen some plus plus nine hundred odds on the Ravens uh, in some other spots as well too. Like that that feels like a good number. I mean, I think that we when you're talking about the Ravens, Jim, outside of them winning the Super Bowl, like you need to start looking at, you know, all the other numbers outside of like win totals and playoffs, but like, you know, getting the, getting those futures on Lamar and, and things of that nature to win MVP. Like this team uh, really controls their own destiny here. And you want to make sure that you uh, take advantage of, of other, of other opportunities in the market, just with the Super Bowl odds being under 10 to one. We got to tell Lamar that he's in the MVP race. So he stops giving it to Gus Edwards in the goal line. Uh, from a DFS perspective, I need that. So uh, Lamar, win yourself your second MVP. Stop giving it to Gus. Please save me. Uh, please help me here. Now, you mentioned the 49ers being potentially a bit undervalued. I I agree. Uh, I look at, I have a model that runs with no priors. And this is not a model I use to bet uh, because you should have priors still uh, at this point in the year. But when I look at that one, looking at just 2023 data, the top ranked team in the NFL is the 49ers and number two is the Ravens. So both these teams look pretty good relative to where the betting markets have them right now. So I find that pretty intriguing personally. And that's even with San Francisco's defense, like not performing up to snuff as of late. They've been underwhelming, I would say, get a pretty tough test against the Jags coming up here this week. So I wouldn't be shocked if that six to one number does look a bit light in retrospect on the 49ers, given they should get Debo Samuel back out of the break. They should get Trent Williams back out there by as well. Brock Purdy played poorly, but like we also saw a very long stretch of him playing well. And again, with those guys being healthier, the odds he can remain afloat, I do think go up. So to yeah. me, Ryan, I agree with you. I think the 49ers might be the more intriguing way to bet the Super Bowl right now. Uh, their uh, NFC odds plus 270. I think I'd rather go Super Bowl personally at 6-1. to one. Uh, they, The NFC at plus 270. But I do think overall your point about them being a bit undervalued is something I'd agree with as well. Yeah, and I mean, I don't. I don't want to bury the lead here, but I mean, one of my favorite bets uh, at, at this point in time right now in the season is around the 49ers as they're coming off of their buy and coming off of three losses. So um, I guess I'll, I guess I'll save that for later as I know okay. you'll be asking me about that. So I'll bury the lead, bury the lead. I love that little tease. Let's talk first about the Houston Texans because we saw CJ Stroud go nuts and this is not a huge surprise, Ryan. He's been very good this entire year. And we talked a bit about the Texans as uh, I like them as a bit uh, as a dark horse to win the AFC South. I think that's probably not going to happen because the Jags are playing really good football right now. So that that hope is probably gone, but they're right in the thick of the AFC playoff race. They're currently plus 250 to make the playoffs at FanDuel Sportsbook. They were plus 260 yesterday, so it seems like there's a tiny bit of interest in the Texans right now. Any interest for you there in the Texans at plus 250, Ryan, or... Is it more so just excitement for the future around this team? Yeah, you know, we I always like to look at these odds, Jim, just especially with the new format where we're getting, you know, that that extra team that's in there. And the Houston Texans, Jim, I mean, uh, CJ Stroud, like, uh, you know, Carolinas might be kicking themselves up for years to come. This is just so fun. And, you know, it's so fun to root for rookie quarterbacks. So fun to root for rookie quarterbacks who are able to come in and just make claim, you know, to it right away. Like Joe Burrow was able to do that. We've seen that with some other Patrick Mahomes when he first started. So, you know, CJ Stroud, he goes as this team goes and, you know, they do play in a favorable division with still some great matchups on paper um, to be able to kind of stake their claim there and, and sneak into the playoffs. I think that's a fair number of just under three to one, especially if they're going to continue rolling. Now, the, the thing about it, Jim, is that they're going to have to continue rolling. Um, they're going to yeah. get the Bengals this week, which is on the road. That's not going to be great. So there might might be another loss. But then you get a home game against Arizona, uh, Jacksonville, 
you know, it's at home at least. And we know that Jacksonville can play that Drucker and Hyde game. Denver, the Jets, Tennessee, Cleveland, Tennessee, and Indy to finish out the year. Like these are going to be games that they're going to be in. And when you're talking about the way that the offense is playing here, you know, I, they can keep up with Cincinnati. They can keep up with Jacksonville. I think they're, they're going to be in position to be able to be in these games, not necessarily get blown out. So yeah, I'm with you here. Absolutely love getting action on this number. Yeah, you mentioned the schedule. I think that's pertinent here. I think that that if you like the Texans, it might be a good time to wait and bet them after this Bengals game. Because I do think that'll probably be a loss. Um, looking at like I've bet the Texans money line every single week this year. This will be the first week I do not because uh, I actually do not show value in them. The market would need to move a lot. Um, actually, just kidding. I do show value on their money line. Okay, well <laughs> I lied. Um, so I do show value in the Texans money line. Uh, I've got the spread at five point five five. So that's probably. I think that's a bit aggressive uh, or I'll just where it should be given how well the Bengals have played recently. So I think I'd rather wait kind of like you were saying, you know, take advantage of the schedule. The fact they're playing Arizona with Kyler though next week, uh, which is kind of fun, but um, maybe hold off until next week, get them there, take advantage before they get into the softer portion of that schedule. I'm trying to find where my other model has uh, this game. Houston, yeah, it's five point or six point oh. So like both are a bit under six and a half. So maybe some value there, but I think I, I'd wait. Let the Bengals beat them because the Bengals will probably look pretty good. It's not going to ruin my enthusiasm around the Texans. So get them before that Arizona game. Take advantage of the undulations of the schedule. Like you said, the Jag team is at home. They've beaten them once already so far this year. I think they are a team to monitor and a team to potentially invest in, but maybe wait until after week number ten to do so. Now let's open things up, Ryan. Talk about other teams that grabbed your attention in week nine outside of the Ravens and Texans. Which teams got the biggest bump up or bump down for you based on what they did in week number nine? Well, bump up is it's the Cincinnati Bengals. And how long had we been talking about this, Jim, you know, on covering the spread? You know, the one thing if people, if if fans and, and, you know, constituents have been listening to this podcast, it's been banging the drum for the Cincinnati Bengals since the Joe Burrow injury, like we kind of talked this into fruition, like there, there could be a time when the Bengals are just kind of firing on all cylinders and you're going to be looking at odds and thinking, wow, why did I get action on them any earlier? Like, and that, that is all gone now. Like when you're, uh, uh, where is it here? Our season awards futures on the market, like Joe Burrow now nine to one, like this guy was 30 and higher odds to win MVP, like not just two, three weeks ago. Um, So that's gone. You know, the Bengals even win the division, which doesn't even feel that favorable now the way that the Ravens are rolling, but, you know, three, just over three to one there. Um, They, they are just, you know, Lou Amaro, Lou Amaruno, I'm going to get his name right, but the defense coordinator (laughs) um, for the Bengals, he's got this team real and Joey B. I mean, you know, we bet on, we bet on talent. We bet on quarterbacks. Like, that's just every time for me. And, you know, Joey B, as long as he was healthy, and those were what the reports were saying, and they kept putting them out there, now they're on a four-game winning streak, and I think they're they're riding high. So absolutely love the Bengals. Uh, we have a couple futures on them that I'm excited uh, to see how those play out later. Um, you know, I think – the other team um, that's just been – we've talked about them all year too is the Buffalo Bills, and I just don't know what to do w- with this squad. I mean, they have all the pieces there. They have the talent on paper to be able to still feel like they can put this together. Um, and when we're talking about you know their upcoming schedule, before they head into the bye, I think they set themselves up for some success here. I mean, to make the playoffs, they're minus 128, like – you're not even looking at that. Like I think the bills are making the playoffs. So I don't think there's any value there, but it's the season futures. Like outside it, I'm not going to take Josh Allen for MVP, but like bills futures to win the super bowl, like and put themselves in the chance to succeed to win the AFC. Like, yeah, I want to get some action on that. We get Denver uh, and the jets both at home. They're going to have a road matchup in Philly leading into the bye. Like, can they keep up Philly and like, a three-game win streak going into that bye and be back on the the Bills bandwagon um, if other teams start to falter here in the three weeks. So I still want to get action on the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I still think that they're favorable in the futures market. I mean, this offense has still been so good uh, for the Bills. Like, the, the, I know the defense has been bad, and 
that's that matters for sure. And it's going to keep being bad because they've lost so many key pieces on the defense. So that part is going to stick. But Josh Allen, even with the shoulder injury, is still playing very good football. And I'm with you, Ryan. I want to invest in the Bills. And I'm going to invest in the Bills in week number 10 specifically, which we'll talk about uh, later on against the Denver Broncos. So I agree with you. Um, they're not dead yet. And until they are, this is the kind of team that can make a playoff run if they make it because of how good Josh Allen can be in a single game setting, stuff like that. So Bills, definitely not dead yet. The Bengals, 14 to 1 win Super Bowl. Bills are 15 to 1. I'd probably lean Bengals over Bills in uh in the in that in that market personally, but I agree with you. Both these teams still have the upside to get the job done, even if they don't wind up having the best playoff positioning. Now, Ryan, which of the futures are you targeting entering week number 10? Yeah, uh, I want to talk about some fun ones here. Uh, we're going into the passing props market, and I was going to talk about, you know, the, the Carolina Panthers kind of reeling and maybe having a, you know, they're the second favorite odds on the FanDuel Sportsbook to have the worst record. I think that's pretty viable. I am curious to see how Arizona handles the Kyler situation because I think that could kind of put some spark plugs into, yeah. into Arizona, but that defense is so bad. So it's just one I'm under. But Bryce Young um, to lead in interceptions, he's nine to one right now. Um, and I just, I don't know that they'll bench him. Like, I don't know. I think right. Frank Wright is kind of prideful and I think they'll kind of just let him run. And, you know, I don't think that he's, you know, four ticks better or four ticks worse. However, that, which shakes out than Mac Jones, who's five to one, you know, and Mac Jones, I do like, we've seen the Bailey Zappi story, right? Like we've seen them been able to pull it and, you know, there's Belichick. Um, there, there's just too much uncertainty there for me to go with Mac Jones, like Josh Allen. I think he's going to get an upswing here um, actually heading into the buy um, with some favorable matchups. So uh, I, I do like Bryce young there. I think even Jordan love is kind of interesting the way that he's, um, been playing and turned the ball over, I think almost in every game um, this season. So uh, that's that's a market that I'm looking at um, for sure. When I talked about the 49ers earlier, uh, Jim, which I, I actually clicked on the wrong thing as I was going through it. But if we look at their win totals, the yeah. number there, 11 and a half, like this is, it's plus money. This is something that I'm just going to be hammering. Now they have seven games left in the season. Um they are coming off of their bye. Like I said, they've just lost three games in a row. But after the bye, this is actually where the 49ers have shined under Kyle Shanahan. So if we just look at uh, the tenure there for Kyle, Han for Kyle Shanahan before the bye, um, their, rec their record is actually 16 and 30. But after the bye, 36 and 16. I mean, mm -hmm. something about this team just after the bye that they are able to, you know, get things going on the right path. And they just have, you know, they're bringing in Chase Young. Like, we know what the yeah. Christian McCaffrey story is. Debo Samuel is going to come back healthy. Um, and their division kind of lends itself for them to be able to have some favorable matchups. So I'm, I'm, I'm really on this team to be able to, you know, pull this off and pull some magic off to get to that 12 number at plus 120. Yeah, looking uh, ahead here for the 49ers, um, currently, as you said, they're coming out of their bye. The record for them so far is 5-3. and three. So in order to get to 12 wins, they'd need to win seven games, and they yep. have got nine games remaining. It's 7-2. That's, that's right. Seven. Yep. I said yes. left, but nine games left need seven wins. Yeah, so 7-2, and two, and you look at their schedule – I think like the one they've got games against Philadelphia and uh, Baltimore. Both those games are at or, uh, the the Baltimore game is at home. Philly is on the road. I think they can hang with Philadelphia for sure. Um, you know, it's a rematch of the NFC Championship game last year, but Brock Purdy hopefully healthy this time around. I think they can make that kind of run. I did uh, lay the three with the 49ers against the Jags on Sunday, so I do like them in week number uh, week number ten as well. So. I think that's not a bad number. It's plus 120 to get over 11 and a half. So the, the sports book is accounting for the fact their schedule is pretty tough. So it's not as if you're catching them off guard here. So I don't think that's too bad, Ryan. Like you said, three straight losses, but they are, again, based on my 2023 only numbers, the best team in football. So I don't think that's totally out of bounds either. No, it, it's it's one that I, I just thought was so interesting. I'm always going back into the win totals market just to see adjustments there mm -hmm. um, and absolutely love being able to get in on that number. 
Okay, so the 49ers over 11 and a half wins, plus 120. Ryan is liking that one right now over at FanDuel. That is what we have for Ryan for today. Uh, Ryan back with us next week on Monday and Tuesday. Check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, a pleasure to have you on for today as always. Uh, good luck to you with your bets across upcoming weekend, and we'll talk to you again on Monday. Yeah, can't wait, Jim. Good luck to everybody. All righty, again, find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W back with us once again next week on Monday to preview the Bills and the Broncos, a team we just discussed. We'll dig into that game and more. Outline where my model is showing value across week number 10 in just one second. But first, score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wage required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan. New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y in New York. Let's dig in now to the Week 10 lines over at FanDuel Sportsbook and outline where my model is showing value for this week. Let's actually start things off with the final game of the week. That is the Broncos and the Bills. And right now, the Bills are 7.5 point favorites of FanDuel Sportsbook, minus 105 on that side. And I do show value in the Bills there. Now, with this number being a 7.5, I think the Bills could be a good teaser leg for this week. I think the only partner I saw for them, based on numbers yesterday, was the Raiders. They were plus two and a half against the Jets. Uh, That is not up again yet uh, with the Jets having played last night. I would bet that number changes a bit based on how poorly the Jets played. But if it's two and a half or one and a half uh, on the Raiders side, plus uh, plus one and a half or plus two and a half, I could see teasing the Bills down to one and a half and teasing the Raiders to get across both three and seven with them. So based on right now, don't have any other teasers to pair them with, but I do like the Bills straight up. And that's part of why I'd be willing to put them in a teaser. The reason for liking them is that I think there's good value in seven and a half. I've got this number in the double digits as the Bills take on the Broncos. So enough of a discount to justify not getting a win if this game lands on seven. The Bills have definitely had issues of late, but they still rank second in my model's offensive power rankings this year. The defense has been legitimately bad. They rank 27th there, but Denver is still dead last in defense despite some recent improvements. So still pretty bad there. Josh Allen's shoulder injury, definitely concerning. But even with that, the Bills have maintained really good levels of uh, late down success. They're converting on third and fourth down at a high rate. And the early down numbers are still respectable, With the Broncos coming off a bye, uh, with the Bills having some stink on them right now, I understand why this number is where it is, but I think it's an overreaction. So I'm on the Bills here. I think uh, they are, again, a good option for a teaser if you like another team getting across three and seven. But regardless, I think that they are a quality straight bet as well. Minus seven and a half is minus 105 at FanDuel Sportsbook on them. 
other side I like for this week is going to be in the uh, the Germany game. It is the the Colts taking on the Patriots, where right now Patriots are one and a half point favorites. Total in this game is 43 and a half. I do like the under here a bit, but I'm going to go with the Colts minus one and a half, which is minus 110 at FanDuel Sports. We have seen some movement toward the Patriots here uh, from where things were yesterday. So it's possible you can get a better number on this one later. And the Colts have also, a lot of times this year, had the market move against them as the week has gone along. Like the openers have been more optimistic on them than where the numbers have closed. So maybe hold off on betting this one, but where it stands right now, I do show value. Looking at Gardner Minshew, this year he's at 0.01 passing net expected points per dropback. NEP is number fires EPA metric. And 0.01 is not great. The league average tends to be around 0.1. So it's below average, but it is a quite a bit better than Mac Jones mark of negative 0.12. And that number is unadjusted for opponent, but the Colts have actually faced a pretty decent level of competition on defense thus far. And they've also maintained their early down rushing efficiency, even with no Anthony Richardson, uh, Jonathan Taylor getting ramped up has helped there. Zach Moss playing well has helped too. So they're still running the ball effectively, despite not having Anthony Richardson out there, the Patriots, you know, they, they lost this past week to the commanders. I think they played better than what their result was. So that is a bit um, a bit misleading, I would say, how things played out for them in week nine. But they're still just 28th in my model's offensive power rankings. And that is not accounting for the Kendrick Bourne loss because that's just a straight power ranking before injury adjustments are made. So downgrading them from, even from there, I, again, think the under is in play. Um, if you were to tie those together, the Colts, uh, minus one and a half with the under at uh, 43 and a half. It'd be plus 239 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I don't mind that by any means. Um, prefer to go straight uh, with the Colts at minus one and a half, but do think there is potential value if you want to go with the same game parlay there with the Colts minus one and a half and the under at 43 and a half. Don't mind that, but I will go with the Colts minus one and a half personally. So the two sides I like this week are the Bills minus seven and a half at minus 105 and the Colts minus one and a half at minus 110. Couple totals stand out to me for this week. First one is between the Seahawks and the Commanders, and that total is 45 and a half. And I took the under on the Commanders last week, and I'm going to do it once again here in this matchup with Seattle. And obviously, the Commanders are a pretty over conducive team because they just traded away Montez Sweat and Chase Young, so they lost a couple of key defensive players, and they throw at a very high rate. Throwing keeps the, uh, you know, stops the clock when you don't gain yardage most of the time. And that's a good thing for overs. So I understand why this number is here, but the Seattle defense has played pretty well so far outside of the Baltimore game. Pace in this game is still middling despite the commander's high pass rate. And that's the number that would be influenced most by that. And they take a lot of sacks, sacks, kill drives, sacks, lose points. Now, Sam Howell, to his credit, has done a lot better that the past two weeks. So maybe this is a trend where Howell realizes that he can't take sacks at the rate he has been, improves in that metric, and suddenly makes his commander's offense more efficient. But again, it's a tough matchup here with Seattle. They're on the road. Uh, the offense for Seattle doesn't tend to let it rip unless they're pushed by the opposing side. So I do think that, like, it's within the range of outcomes for this game to be very high scoring. Like if you told me this was a 30 to 27 game, I wouldn't bat an eye. That's very much in the range of outcomes. But when we're betting on things like this, we're betting on medians. I think the median outcome is under 45 and a half. My model has this one at 41. So actually a good amount below where the market currently has it. There is some rain in the forecast currently. I don't care a ton about rain personally, uh, but uh, I do have the wind speeds for this game at seven miles per hour. So not zero there either. And that is influencing the model a bit too. So under 45 and a half is minus one Oh five uh, minus one fifth or minus one ten at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. I do think there's value in that. I understand why this number is where it is, uh, but do you think we should take the under given the rain, given the wind, given all those factors combined, and given how well the Seattle defense is played, I do think the under is the way to go here. Final spot where I'm seeing value for this week is another total that is between the Titans and the Buccaneers. Over 38 and a half is minus 105 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, and I do feel pretty good about this number. It's a matchup of two teams that are very good against the run. The, the Titans haven't been as good recently, but had some injuries up front. Those guys are now getting healthy. So 
I'd expect their run defense to bounce back. And the, the Buccaneers have been among the best rush defense teams in football for a very, very long time, getting healthy up front once again as well. So it's two teams that encourage you to throw the ball against them on early downs. And again, throwing is good for overs, despite the fact we want the under on that Seattle-Washington game. So I think we should see a decent amount of play volume in this game. It's not the fastest paced game. It's actually one of the slower ones for this week. But wind speeds here, eight miles per hour, not great, but also not terrible. Two offenses that can move the ball well enough. Will Levis has had similar efficiency numbers to Ryan Tannehill. Uh, their pass rate is pretty similar. So honestly, I'm keeping them fairly similar to what they were before the Tannehill injury, just because that's what we've seen thus far out of Levis and the way they've operated uh, for this team. And also Levis chucks a deep and chucking a deep isn't like a, a thing that where you automatically get efficient offense, but it's more likely to keep that clock paused uh, due to inc incompletions. It can get you chunky. It can get you turnovers. All those things are good for overs. Uh, as to the Bucks, they can't run the football. Like they're very bad against him. I don't, uh, very bad. At it, and I don't think that's going to change in this matchup here with Tennessee. So basically what I'm seeing here is we should see a matchup where we see a decent amount of passing volume. Neither pass defense is good. And the weather is not bad. The pace is not bad enough to, to cancel this out. I've got this one at 41.6. Uh, it's where my model, my model has this total. Total right now at FanDuel Sports began is 38 and a half. Over is minus 105. These two teams have been very under friendly so far this year, but I think that's accounted for in the market right now. So we'll take the Bucks and the Titans over 38 and a half minus 105 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Yeah, the uh, bets I'm liking for this week, uh, that one plus the Commander Seahawks under 45 and a half and minus 110, the Colts minus one and a half at minus 110, and the Bills minus seven and a half at minus 105. And if you can get a teaser chance there, likely with the Raiders, uh, depending on where they reopen against the Jets, if they reopen at plus one and a half or plus two and a half, could potentially throw the Raiders in there as a teaser with the Bills as well. That's all we got here as far as the first look for week number 10. Before we close off shop for today, we do got to go back through recommendations from last week here on the show. Let's start things off with the Breeders' Cup. We had Dubs Anderson on to preview the Breeders' Cup. You can find Dubs on Twitter at Mr. Dubsy. Find him on FanDuel TV and TVG as well. In the Breeders' Cup, Cup Classic, Dubs liked Ushba Tesoro at 4-1 to one and the Saudi Crown at 12-1. to one. White Abarillo wound up winning that race, so no catch there on Ushba Tesoro or Saudi Crown. And then the other one that Dubs liked was Caravel 5-1 to one in the turf sprint. Nobles won that one. So didn't get the wins on those, but it was good talking to Dubs. Hopefully get him back here on the show uh, once the horse racing season picks back up as we get to the spring. Our guest on the college football and the NFL side of things was Dr. Ed Feng as well. Always, you can find him on Twitter at the Power Rank. Check him out at thepowerrank.com as well. Ed's college football bet for this week was Kansas State plus four and a half against Texas. And Ed has been on fire throughout this entire college football season. Got another win, another win here. Kansas State did not win outright, but did cover the four and a half as they lost that game 33 to 30 in overtime. So a win for Ed on the college football side of things. In the NFL, Ed liked the Bills money line against the Bengals, as did I. And obviously the Bills uh, lost the game 24 to 18. So Hoping for a bounce back on the Bills this week as they take on the Broncos. And uh, Ed, again, really good on the college football side of things. Check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank and thepowerrank.com. Ed is back with us for more college football tomorrow here on the show. JJ Zacharyson was our player prop guest on Friday. And JJ, five for five in this one. Find JJ on Twitter at late round QB. Check him out at late round.com and the late round of fantasy football podcast. The, the wins for JJ. He had Patrick Mahomes over 25 and a half rushing yards against the dolphins minus minus one fourteen. He had T Higgins over 48 and a half receiving yards. Pretty sure he doubled that number. I think he had like one ten. So easy win there. He had Dalton Kincaid over 34 and a half receiving yards. That was well over as well. He, I think he was around 81. So didn't just hit. He hit in a big way. We did talk about T Higgins alternate markets as well, uh, potentially getting more upside there, which would have paid off. You had decided to go with that route too. both the touchdown bets for JJ hit within the span of like 30 seconds. Uh, the first one was Chris Olave two to one for the saints taking on the bears. He finally scored. It's been a decade since Chris Olave scored, but of course JJ was on him when he did. And he also had Kate Otten plus four ninety. for the Buccaneers against the Texans and Otten scored not just once, but twice. So 
JJ had T. Higgins double up his yardage number. He had Dalton Kincaid double up his, his yardage number and had K. Dotton score twice in addition to the Alave one at two to one in the Mahomes hit. So not just five for five, but five for five in emphatic fashion. Awesome week for JJ. Check him out on Twitter at late round QB. Find his work at late round.com and on the late round fantasy football podcast. We had Ryan Williams on last night to talk about Monday night football. Find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W rough night here just because it was such a weird night where the guys we expect to be involved didn't get the job done. And Austin Eckler dropped a bunch of passes that that did impact things quite a bit. Uh, Ryan though, did like the jets chargers under 39 and a half, which hit uh, as that total finished at 33 points had the jets plus three and a half, which did not hit uh, the props here. Uh, Brees, Brees Hall over 21 and a half receiving yards. He had a, a longer reception that called back via, via penalty. Thought that was kind of a ticky tack call on Lazard. Uh, but regardless, that's accounted for. You know, we had to account for that stuff always when betting. Uh, so missed on Brees Hall over 21 and a half receiving yards. Did hit Garrett Wilson over 68 and a half receiving yards. He had 80 in that game. So good hit there. The Eckler ones were over for 84 and a half rushing plus receiving yards, over 33 and a half receiving yards, and over four and a half receptions at minus 106. And Eckler. I, I think one of the drops is more on Herbert because he kind of underthrew him when he was wide open. So, like, it wasn't all Eckler's fault, but didn't wind up hitting on any of those. Uh, also had Eckler plus 380 for the first Chargers reception. That went to, uh, uh, what was it? Gerald Everett uh, got that one. So, no Eckler there either. Uh, had Donald Parham plus 430 for anytime touchdown. Didn't get that one. And Herbert throw a pick at plus 104, which missed as well, even though he was really bad in this game. So, uh, rough game overall uh, on that one for the Chargers and the Jets. We'll try to bounce back uh, with the Bills and Broncos on Monday night this upcoming weekend. Find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. As for my stuff in the NFL side of things, went two and two for this week. One of the losses was the Bills. I got them at plus 136 in the money line. They closed at plus 110 and obviously didn't get the job done. So it's been frustrating in that regard, getting good closing line value throughout this year. Not good results. That was annoying. Uh, got good CLV on the Chargers at minus three. They closed the three and a half. And of course, did win pretty handily last night. I had the Patriots and Commanders under 40 and a half. That one looked toast in the third quarter as I, I think it was at like 34 or so pretty early on in the third quarter. But finished at 37. Uh, Patriots couldn't get that final drive going. Uh, Mac Jones threw a pick off Juju Smith-Schuster's hands. So, you know. It, a win is a win. We'll definitely take that with the under for the Patriots and Commanders. Other total was the Raiders Giants over 37 and a half. And the Raiders did their half. Uh, they scored 30. But with Daniel Jones going down with a, a torn ACL, unfortunately, couldn't get the over at 37 and a half. And injuries happen. Um, they've happened a lot to me recently because I had uh, three bets where the quarterback got hurt in week number eight. One here again. So could have been a better week. But, you know, two and two could have been worse, too, uh, with that Patriots and Commanders total. So can't complain. But. Frustrating not to get that Raiders and Giants game, despite being on the Raiders offense in a game where they did play very well. Got to wrap up the NASCAR Cup Series as well. Final race of the year. Uh, Ryan Blaney wins the championship. Talked about that in the show. Uh, was digging if you get him at plus 280 or longer. So hopefully you were able to find Blaney at plus 280. I was earlier on in the week. Not sure if that was still around later on once we spoke, but Blaney had the best car. He deserved to win the championship. Glad he did. Uh, fun to listen to his emotion on the radio after he won that race. So happy for Ryan Blaney, happy he won that race and happy to have won the Blaney championship bet. As far as recommendations here on the show, I had Christopher Bell to win group one. He was four to one and Bell, I thought had a good car didn't qualify well, but was running with Blaney, honestly, early on that race. And they were picking their way through the pack. I thought they had better cars than uh, Byron and Larson. So I'm not sure what Bell would have done, but he crashed, blew a tire or something, broke on the car, hit the wall. So he did not win that one. But I feel pretty good about the process there. Given the number was four to one, I, I did like that. He was very fast in practice on Friday as well. Top 10 bets were Chase Elliott at plus 150 and Alex Bowman at plus 450. And Hendrick just was not on with those two the entire second half of the year. So I'm curious what those two guys will do early on in 2024. My model will probably be pretty low on them relative to market, but like they're good drivers. It's a very good team. You know, kind of curious what they will do. But uh, I showed value on them a lot toward down the stretch this year and never really got the job done. So I'm curious what things will look like for them next year. But 
Overall, profitable season for me in NASCAR. Excited about that. Excited to make some tweaks, make some improvements. As always, the model for next year and see where we're at once 2024 rolls around. The Daytona 500 will be here before you know it. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. One final big thank you to our guest, Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at RyanAlexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow me on threads at Jim.Sonnes and find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow, Dr. Ed Feng will be with us. Talks in college football in week number 11. Should be a fun one as always. Make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts or on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV plus to get that show as it goes live. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. As always, we'll talk to you once again, Wednesday. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel podcast network. <laughs>